I am. I'm Carol Oferos, but I'm known by many names. One could be brown feather and one could be cookie. So you can call me whatever. Um, and I also wanted to call your attention to these beautiful flowers. We have so many flowers today. Velda, our beautiful um, volunteer coordinator, back in the back, has brought all the poinsettia. And Susan Heindel, right here, brought this beautiful um, arrangement by Marvel and our beautiful Kimberly are such popular and wonderful musicians that occasionally they're away from us, sadly to say, but this weekend they aren't that far away. They're in southern Arizona performing. Uh, but we do have a wonderful special message that they videotaped for us to, um, to hear about uh, what they're up to. So I'm going to let Wendy please project on the screen a nice message with the lights dim. Thank you. Welcome to the Center of Universal Mind, everybody. And thank you for coming today in support of Reverend Cheryl. The message of the shaman's path of forgiveness is very important. And we all want to feel empowered in our lives and feel confident that we have the ability to change things for the better for ourselves and others. This is using our personal power in the appropriate manner. Last Sunday, we did the Metabhavana Loving Kindness Meditation and the Just Like Me exercise. I hope you're continuing to do these practices on a daily basis. I have noticed for myself that just thinking the phrase, I wish for that man or woman to be happy really changes my mood. I feel my own happiness and love for myself even more. And as you know, our happiness is a direct result of the amount of love that is coming out of us. The elements of the exercise and meditation are on our website, www.centeruniversallight.com, and can be downloaded there and from our newsletter as well. So please go there and write it down so you can remember the process and soak your mind in kindness so that when you get to a person that you really don't care much for, it will be easy to say to yourself, may he or she be well, happy, and free from suffering. Continue to do your part here, because I will be adding other community building exercises to my Sunday messages this whole month. We're also planning another sage smudging ceremony along with another chance for you to stand in your power and express your gratitude for how spirit has been working in your life. On December 24th, instead of our weekly gathering at 10.30 a.m., we are planning an evening spiritual gatherings starting at 5.30 p.m. with a lot of music, stories, and ending with a votive candle lighting ceremony and a ritual burning of our New Year intentions to affirm our ability to lead meaningful and ethical lives capable of adding to the greater good of humanity. The candle is a symbol of the light of reason and rationality. This will be an evening free of spiritualism and religiosity that recognizes human beings as a part of nature and holds that the values be they religious, ethical, social, or political, have their source in human experience and culture. We hold that the goals of life stem from human need and interest rather than from theological or ideological abstract beliefs. And we assert that humanity must take responsibility for its own destiny. The evening ceremony will be followed by the sharing of a wassail like non-alcoholic drink of hot cider and spices in Studio B. I encourage you all to bring your own mug to drink out of in order to reduce garbage at the end. We should all be home and in bed, tucked in our beds by 7 or 8 p.m. And I don't want anybody to miss this beautiful daily message today. The word is faith. Spiritual understanding is always available through my Christ self. My mind knows what it knows through the input of my senses and experiences. 
while practical choices can easily be made through this knowledge, spiritual understanding is not a function of mind. I access it when I am prayerfully centered in the energy of my heart. It is not always specific, and it may not seem immediately relevant. Spiritual understanding provides me with a feeling of security and peace, a sense of being exactly where I am meant to be at any given moment. Spiritual understanding guides me through every choice. In faith, I know that God's power is greater than any circumstance, and I call upon that energy for every choice or decision. And the beautiful words from Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me, and I will answer you, and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. The word today is a very important word. Faith. Correct me all around. <laughs> Cheryl is the founder of Awaken Possibilities Now. And she merges her various talents as many, many hats. She's a certified educator, a committee organizer, a spiritual teacher, a minister, we call her reverend, and a meditation facilitator for the Ali Division of the Yavapai College, as well as an Ali Learning Group facilitator and workshop leader, too. And to say nothing of her vast experiences also in the healing arts arena. So please help me welcome back Reverend Cheryl Gander Spagnolo. Thank you. <laughs> well, guess what? It's December! Oh, how exciting! We're all thinking about gifts to give people, thinking about all those things that we want to put under the tree for people, or the Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa, whatever it is that we celebrate. It's happening now. And I have something for you. I have a gift that I'm going to introduce you to. And that gift is Ani. A-N-Y-I. Ani is the shaman's path of forgiveness. Forgiveness, a lot of people think that word is like a very negative word, but forgiveness is freedom. Yes. It is freedom because energy is what you are. And we can show our first picture here. Energy is what you are. And your energy field is like a rainbow. You have all these beautiful colors. And the shamans of Peru call these rainbow people because they shine like a rainbow. Their chakras are clear. Their auras has this, this beautiful color to it. That's you. That's you at your best, okay? And a lot of times we find those places where we're not at our best. And what do we do with it? We get angry, we get upset. Well, those are places where we need to forgive ourselves, okay? Because if you're angry at yourself or somebody else, you're going to develop something within your field that you don't want there, okay? So, there's uh, this, the illustrations that I'm going to show you are from Barbara Brennan's book, Light Emerging, okay? And she was a NASA physicist who became a healer and an intuitive seer. So, all of these pictures these illustrations are what she has seen and what many healers will see. So the ones that I'm going to show you are from a person who comes from the world of science first and then came into the healing arts. Okay? So one of the things that the shaman asks you is always to go deep because shamans know that your answers are within yourself. So I'm going to ask you three very, very important questions that are linked to forgiveness, to Ani. And Ani is right relationship. 
And that's the depth of forgiveness. My first question is, what is it that stalks you? What stops you from shining your light? And what or who has control over your emotions? Many of those answers are in unforgiveness. And they hold you back. They take your empowerment. They make you small. And we don't need small people here. We need beautiful, bright, light people, OK? So I'm going to show you another illustration. There's a thing about understanding. And there's, a, um, there's an ashram in South Fallsburg, New York, OK? Because understanding can bring you to forgiveness in a moment. And in this ashram, this was years ago, it was Baba Muktananda. And people would come up to the Catskills from New York, and they would go and see Baba Muktananda for the answers of their pressing questions. And there was this young man, he was in his 40s, and he came from the city, had a nice suit on, he had a lot of money, he was really a businessman. But he had one pressing question. It's been stalking him all his life. And so he gets onto the Darshan line and he walks up to Baba and it's his turn to ask a question. And he says, Baba, why didn't my parents love me? Why couldn't my parents love me? And Baba looks at him. He thinks for a moment. Hmm. You bring me an elephant and I'll give you your answer. And he dismisses the man. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I've got to go find an elephant. Oh, this is ridiculous, I'm going to have the weekend, right? So he goes and he calls and he has money, so he, can, he thinks he can, oh, I'm going to find that elephant, I'm going to get it here. I want to get my answer. This is so important to me. And so he calls all these different places all over the place. And by the end of the weekend, there's nothing. There's no elephant. There's no elephant. Ah, he gets back into the Darshan line. Then he's going to leave. He gets up to Baba. And he says, Baba, I don't have an elephant to give you. I have no elephant to find the answer to my pressing question, why my parents didn't love me. And Baba looks at the man and says, neither did your parents. You can't give what you don't have. So this man walked away that weekend with his answer. He felt his answer. He felt it on a level that gave him forgiveness for his parents not loving him. Because he understood the desperation that he felt in wanting to do something that he could not do. We've all been there. There's all been times when we wanted to give so much and we didn't have it. And that's the understanding that we get. And when we have that, it's true forgiveness. So I'm going to show you another picture. <laughs> um, yeah, look at this. Wow. I've been there. In fact, one day, before I even knew about this book, I was angry at somebody, and I was so angry at them. I can't remember who it was. And I was right in front of them, and I was so angry, and I was yelling something at them. And all of a sudden, I saw, <gasps> I saw daggers coming out of my eyes. I saw light daggers coming out of my eyes. And it stopped me short. <sighs> I never want to do that. I don't want to do that to anybody. And so now, when I get angry, you know what I do? I go in my room, and I scream. I scream. <sighs> Just get it out of my body. Or my kids would find me ripping up old magazines, okay? <laughs> you know, you don't need them anyway. It just really feels good to rip up an old magazine. And you don't have to direct it at anybody, okay? So there's things we can do with our anger. But when you direct it to somebody, guess what? It comes right back. It goes back and forth and back and forth. And do you know what? You don't even have to be in the same room. You could be on the same in a different continent, and that feeling will still haunt you. It will come back and forth and back and forth. As long as you play that game with yourself 
and with them. So, there's another photo. And this photo shows what happens when you don't forgive. These are the things that stalk you, those little blobby things, you know? I've had those. Okay, that over there might be my father, that over there is that other person. The person that I was pushed to find forgiveness for. You see, I was molested when I was seven years old by my guitar teacher. And when I was 36, I had my second child. I had a little girl, two years old, and I had a little infant boy. And I was living out on the east end of Long Island. And there was work that had to be done on the old farmhouse that my husband and I lived in with our two kids. Yeah, a lot of work. <laughs> and I was introduced to the people who were working on my house, and guess what? One of those men had the same last name as the man who molested me as a child. Oh, wow. That threw me back. And I did go to school with his kids. That man was about my age. I did not ask him where he lived or where he grew up. Because I didn't need to know. Because it was my thing that I was dealing with, not him. And I sat down in the grass with my two-year-old daughter and my infant son, and I held him tight. And in that moment, I felt something different. I felt how could an infant like my son know how to do something like that? Where did he learn it? What did they do to that baby? Oh my God, I held my son so tight to me and I sent him all the love because I never wanted anything to happen to him like that, ever. And then I sent that love to the infant who was my molester. How could somebody do that to him? How could I not love that person as a baby? And then I sent it out to all the babies of the world. Because we all start out as an innocent child. And we are taught our behavior. And a molester is taught his, her behavior. Otherwise, they wouldn't know how to do it. And I came to a place in my heart that I hadn't seen in quite a while. It had been clouded over by something that was taken away from me. And I took it back. I took it back with love. I took it back because I loved my child. And because all children should be loved. And all people are children. And when I took that back, I took back my empowerment. And I could stand a little taller. I could understand a little better. And I could have more compassion for the people in the world. And compassion for myself. It took away the guilt. It took away the shame. It took all of that away. Because love is what can dissolve anything when you feel it from your heart. So I have another picture for you. This is a picture of people in right relationship. And we can be this at any time, any place. We can do it in many different ways. And one of the ways that shamans do it is through ceremonies. Why do you think they have pipe ceremonies? Why do you think they have fire ceremonies? Why do you think they have despachos? The indigenous people knew this. They knew this. They still know it. And they go into ceremonies. And you can go into ceremonies. And you can experience that freedom. The freedom and the empowerment that we are waiting for. And with that freedom comes a knowledge because when you go into ceremony, there's something magical that happens. It's unbelievable. I had a man come to a fire ceremony that I was conducting. He was an older man, and he came to the fire ceremony. And during the fire ceremony, what you do is you put your
your intentions into a stick, you offer it to the fire, and you gather up the gifts into your body. And when that happens, you are communing with the elements, source, angels, ancient spirits, and nature. And that's the basis of all reality is energy. So you are shifting something energetically, and when you shift it energetically, it happens in the physical world. So this man came to the fire ceremony, put in his, his stick, and after the ceremony we gathered and talked, and then he left. He came back the next month, because I do it every month on the full moon, and he said, I have something to share. Can I please share something? I said, of course, please do. And so what he did was he shared a story, an experience he had after the fire ceremony. He said, you know, when I came to this fire ceremony, I put the intention to come into right relationship with my first wife. That's what I wanted to do. I hadn't spoken or had any contact with her for 35 years, but I was ready to release the hole that experience had on me. And he said, do you know what? Within two weeks, I got a letter from her. I got a letter from her. She must have looked me up on the internet or something because I got a letter from her and it was a friendly, warm, very nice letter. And she talked about the wonderful things that we had in our lives together and how she, she wanted to have a right relationship with him. Miracles happen all the time. All we need to do is open our eyes and look in the right direction. And when we go into ceremony, we come into Ani with something within ourselves, it frees us and it frees the other person. It does not condone their behavior. There's a difference in condoning behavior and forgiving somebody. There's a big difference. A lot of people think, oh, if I forgive him, then I'm saying it was okay. No, you're not saying it's okay. You're saying, I free myself and I take my power back so that I can shine like this with everybody that I meet. So that somebody that I meet that looks like that person is not going to send me spinning someplace else. Okay? So there's many ways to do this. Understanding is the first. The second is love. If you can feel love for any situation that you have been placed in, it will shift that experience because everything has an energy base. Okay? So, there's another story. Um, Neil Donald Walsh has a book out. It came out in uh, 1997, I believe. Little Soul in the Sun. Anybody familiar with this book? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's a great book. When, I, when it came out, I bought it for everybody I knew. Adults. All adults. <laughs> and what happens in this book is that the little soul wants to know more about who he is. Okay? He's up there in the ethers. And he wants to know a little bit more about what he is. And so he goes, he goes, what can it be? What can it be? Oh boy, I can be something. I want to be something. And he decides, I want to be forgiveness. Oh, I'm going to go down to earth and I'm going to be forgiveness. And then, of course, the son says, well, uh, you can be forgiveness, but you've got to find somebody to forgive. Oh, okay. That's, the, that's a problem. Who, 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 who would do that for me? Because... Uh, they would have to do something to hurt me. Who would do that for me? And this other little soul says, I will. Oh, I will do it. He goes, why would you do that for me? You would have to hurt me. Why would you do that and make yourself mean? And the other little soul says, because I love you. I would do that for you. And so they decide to come down to the earth. And before they do, they have this conversation about, well, what happens if I forget that I'm pretending so hard that I forget who I am and that I really do love you? And the other soul says, well, I'll remind you. If I remember, I'll remind you. But I might not remember either. 
That's our life. See, our life is like we're playing the role of what we need to be for somebody else. I know that some people might have a problem with this statement, but I believe that Judas, as a soul, loved Christ so much that he came down to play that role so Christ could make his entrance into our hearts. Those people that are our biggest nemesis are our greatest teachers. And they have come down. They're all souls like you and me. Okay? And we come into this place to have communication on a human level from our spirit side. And if we are going to look at the world only from the physical part, we're going to get very, 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 very confused. Okay? Because it doesn't look like it fits in every situation. But when we look at it from our inside, our soul, then we get to ask some questions. We get to ask the question of, what is my opportunity here? Okay? What's my opportunity to see something about myself in this place that I am as a spirit person put on this earth? I'm a spirit person, so I look from my spirit place. Not all the time. I mean, come on. I still have those little blobs that hang out, and I bring more of them in, you know? What the heck? I'm still here. And so you can bring all these little blobs you want into your life, but what are you going to do with them? Come into right relationship with them, and then they disappear. They can disappear in a moment, or they can take years. But the thing is, is that the bumper cars, the man working on my house, that was a setup. This is a spiritual setup. There are spiritual setups every place in your life. And they're there to get you to look in the other direction, to look inside, to get you to move in your life in another direction. I see it like finding those gifts. You know the little big box bag you get? with all the tissue paper in it for Christmas, right? Or a gift. And then you have to pull out this tissue paper, and this tissue paper, and this tissue paper, and this tissue until you get to the gift in the bottom, right? OK, well, the gift is there. You just have to go searching for it. you got to pull out all those papers to find the gift inside. Everything's a gift. It might not be in the package that you would like to see it in. And that's what happens. But we are this. We are a spark of the divine. We have no right not to shine. Because as a spark of the divine, we came here to come back to this. And that's all this journey is about, is coming back to this. Being that spark of the divine. Becoming an army right relationship with everything that you see in front of you in the physical world. So I'd like to take you on a shamanic journey. And if you don't want to go, that's okay. Just sit there and feel the energy. But I'd like you to just close your eyes. Ah, feel yourself into your body. Yeah. And take a few moments to breathe. Breathe. And feel above your head a stream of golden light coming down from source. And as it comes down and hits your crown, it starts spreading through every cell in your body, melting through your body, through your cells, flowing down your torso. Flowing down your legs, flowing down through your feet, down through the center of Mother Earth. You are one with this golden light.
I ask you to bring your attention to your heart space. And in your heart space, you'll find a doorway. And as you stand, stand there in your heart space, I want you to open that door. In that doorway is a situation that made you uncomfortable. And you have the opportunity to shift the hold it has on you. You are safe in the golden light. You are fearless. You are empowered beyond measure. You know who you are as you step into the doorway and see that situation. Situation is covered in golden light. And you get to rewind the scenario. Make it different. Make it your choice. See that situation as an opportunity to change it from the inside out. Shift the energy of this situation. Have conversation with the person in that situation. Tell them what you need to tell them. Do what you need to do to make it right. Visualize it differently. Visualize it the way that you want it to be. Visualize it in Ani. Right relationship. And then send it love. Streams of love. Streams of love. Only love. And as you send it love, it shifts. The energy shifts. It comes into right relationship with you. in the right relationship it no longer haunts you. Feel the difference that this vision makes in your heart. Find the empowered feeling Feel the joy of you knowing that you took your power back. And that the situation is now bathed in love. And thank yourself for having the courage to meet with this situation and to shift it. And bathe it in love, and more love, and more love. And bathe yourself in love, more love, and more love. Breathe the love in, breathe it out. Every breath you take, you're breathing in love. Golden, beautiful love of soul.
Feel the smile drift upon your face as you know how powerful you are. You are a spark of the divine. You can do anything with love. Continue to breathe deeply. Christmas Eve 
which is going to be the December 24th Sunday at 5.30. So you have your morning to prepare for the rest of the day. And um, stay with us as we enjoy in Studio B some refreshments. So put that on your calendar. And don't forget to sign up for next Saturday night for our holiday party. And you can do a sing-along. Okay? Mm -hmm. That'll be fun. Um, so if our ushers are wonderful, beautiful ushers, Linda and Wendy will come forward. It's time for us to share our blessings since we are so blessed.